Hey, Professor Wise Guy here, out with my chickens. Now you might ask, why am I out here with the chickens? Well, I would like to have a little conversation about community standards. But first of all, look what they left for me. Isn't that nice? Okay, community standards. What does that have to do with chickens? Let me share it with you. See, when my wife and I bought this place, we were very interested in the community standards, that is the city laws or the city codes, uh, especially the ones that dealt with chickens. We looked into it and we discovered, first of all, you can't have roosters. Why? Because roosters are loud and obnoxious. Fair enough. We also learned that we could have chickens, hens only, females. Hey girls. Uh, but, there was a limit to how many we could have, and it depended on how far the chicken house was from the nearest neighbor's house. Well, we took Google Maps and we looked and we measured, and we discovered that if you were a certain distance, you could have, say, 10 chickens. And if you were a little farther away, you could have 15 chickens. And if you were at least 100 feet away, which we are, you could have up to 20. We have exactly 20 chickens and no roosters. What does that have to do with anything, you ask? Didn't this video say it was gonna have something to do with Facebook? Well, let's go inside and pursue that question. All right, we're inside and I already miss the chickens, but why did we pay so much attention to these community standards? We really didn't wanna develop a relationship with our local animal control officers. Now, it's good that community standards are written down, especially in a larger group like a city. When they're written down, a lot of the potential for confusion is eliminated. Let's imagine that an animal control officer arrives at our house someday and proclaims that we're only allowed to have 15 chickens. What would I do? I'd point to the very clear provisions in the city code. Since neither the chicken house nor the neighbor's homes are gonna move, it's very clear that we're completely compliant with the community standards. If the animal control person were to persist and write me a citation, I would politely protest. If need be, I could take the matter to the city council or even a court. And given that the rules are abundantly clear and that I'm following them, I'm pretty confident that I could win that tussle. Now again, perhaps you're wondering why I'm talking about chickens when the title suggested that this was going to be something about Facebook. Okay, I'm getting to that. A few days ago, we had an intriguing adventure one evening in the house. As we sat and discussed nothing of consequence, we realized that we were not alone. A bat had somehow gotten into the house and was flying aimlessly around the place. We took a vote and determined unanimously that we'd prefer that bat to make its way outside. To that end, we opened a pair of double doors, providing a large and inviting means of escape. The bat didn't pick up on what we were laying down. Eventually, we used a cookie sheet to hit the bat, stunning it. We then moved the bat out onto the deck, and in a couple of minutes, the bat gathered its wits and flew off into the night, perhaps suffering from a headache. Finding this interaction somewhat amusing, I described it in text on Facebook and then added a 10 second video of the bat, clearly very much alive. Now I'd include that video here, but you just never know if those who enforce the community standards on one platform might not talk to the ones on another. Well, the next day I received a notice from Facebook that my post had gotten me into the doghouse or maybe it would be the bat house. Specifically, it said, a post from the last year didn't follow our standards. Well, that's helpful. I was offered the opportunity to ask them to reconsider that decision. Taking that opportunity, I was impressed that they seemed to have spent a solid 30 seconds before deciding, no, we were right all along. Now, just what portion of the community standards did I violate? They didn't offer a lot of help there. I was basically left to guess. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that it had something to do with animals. When I searched the Facebook community standards, here are the places where they might have believed that I went astray. In one spot, it forbids, quote, statements of intent 
calls to action representing, supporting, or advocating for, or depicting, admitting, or promoting acts of physical harm against animals committed by you or your associates except in cases of hunting, fishing, religious sacrifice, food preparation or processing, pest or vermin, self-defense or redemption. Whew. We'll come back to that one. The other possibility would be in the section labeled violent or graphic content. Now there, we were warned against images that show imagery of animals. The following content involving animals. Videos depicting humans killing animals. If there is no explicit manufacturing, hunting, food consumption, processing, or preparation context. Okay. Imagery of animal-to-animal -animal fights when there are visible innards or dismemberment of non-generating body. That's non-regenerating body, unless in the wild. Whew. Imagery of humans committing acts of torture or abuse against live animals. Imagery of animals showing wounds or cuts that render visible innards or dismemberment. They like that word innards. If there is no explicit manufacturing, hunting, taxidermy, medical treatment, rescue, or food consumption, preparation or processing context, or the animal is already skinned or with its outer layer fully removed. Whew, that's a mouthful. Now let's dispense with those last things first. Since there are no humans depicted in my video, that excludes the first and the third items. There's not an animal fight in the video, which excludes number two. That leaves the injunction against, quote, showing wounds or cuts, well, that one's out also, since the bat had no wound whatsoever. Since we have to assume that the Facebook Community Standards Police are capable of reading, all of these violent and graphic content items are not in play. So what about the previous category? Acts of physical harm. There was no physical harm here. The bat was flying away in a few minutes. But even if there had been physical harm, what I did to that bat was covered by actually several of the exceptions. Now, I wasn't hunting bats. It's not bat season. But you have to agree that a bat flying around in your house is a pest. Boom! One exception. A bat can be a source of serious illness. Therefore, moving it out could be termed self-defense. Pow! Two exceptions. And a bat inside my largely bug-free house will eventually starve to death, rendering this an act of redemption. Wham! Three exceptions. Take that, Facebook Community Standards Police. Oh man, I'm gonna get in trouble for this. Okay, am I making too much of a smallish thing? Yes. I'm not about to argue that my great bat fiasco is some sort of vital First Amendment test case. It's not like my friend whose recommendation of a giant taco served in a local restaurant ran him afoul of the authorities. I'm not making this up. But in reflecting on this event, I find myself with some larger thoughts about community standards as we experience them today. Observation number one. Community standards are only really community standards if we have the opportunity to confront our accuser. The Facebook Community Standards Police Force operates with faces covered and badge numbers hidden. They can say anything and do anything and have almost complete lack of accountability. Compare that with that animal control officer who could conceivably bring a complaint about my chickens. I could talk to that officer. Now, some of you might say, wise guy, Facebook isn't a government entity. They don't have to function according to the Constitution. Well, fair enough. But honestly, I'm not sure things are really that different. Let's imagine that you behave badly in a restaurant, perhaps saying particularly outrageous things to a server. Your choices were so out of bounds, so contrary to the community standards, that you were banned from the restaurant, perhaps forever. As aggravating as that might be, you at least would have been given this news by somebody in particular, a manager, an owner, the corporate higher-ups. You wouldn't simply be mailed an anonymous postcard informing you of your non-person status at the eatery in question. And if you were, 
then the place isn't worthy of your business. Observation number two, community standards only have meaning in, get this, community. If some faceless entity is able to impose pronouncements and penalties with no meaningful guarantee of conversation and explanation, then it's not really anything like a community. Instead, it's a petty dictatorship. Actual communities are messy. They allow for dispute and disagreement. They, they don't interpret the guidelines as rigidly as possible, or as in this case, more rigidly than possible. Instead, they let people work matters out. Rather than the community standards police swooping down on me in anonymous and swift judgment, okay, I'm probably overselling this, but instead of them acting as they did, there's another body that might have done the job. I have about 500 Facebook friends. Surely one or more of them might have talked to me, either publicly or privately, if some of them thought I was out of line. They are my community, after all, and they're the ones who will actually see my supposedly offending post. You know, I've had that happen before on a completely different matter. I'd post something, and then somebody, usually somebody who actually cares about me, would cause me to look at the thing in a different way. Then I reflected on what I had said and actually changed both my behavior and my attitude. Let me give you a real life example. My brother-in-law lives in an area with some really big, really jarring speed bumps. I found them annoying and I griped about them every time I drove to or from his house. But then he pointed out that the speed bumps went in after two little children were hit by careless drivers in the area. Oh, with that information, my attitude and my behavior changed. And that's what we should hope for. Now, I'm not suggesting that Facebook should allow videos of dog fights or animal torture or something like that. I'm suggesting that when something is in the borderlands of the rules, it should be left alone. We should leave things alone as much as we possibly can. Observation number three. Community standard enforcement of the sort we see on social media interferes with learning. No thanks to Facebook, I have learned another approach for removing bats from my house. It's far gentler and apparently just as effective. This came in a response to my non-blacklisted post, which complained about the enforcement action. Another response to that non-banished post suggested that bats are an endangered species. Honestly, I thought, oh wow, I never even thought about that. But then I did some research and discovered that of the bat species native to Missouri, only two are endangered, and this critter wasn't one of them. I learned some stuff about bats in all of that, but Facebook gets absolutely zero credit for it. When a society shuts down conversations, society is the poorer for it. Yes, a good deal of unpleasant and unhelpful information will be let through the gates, but that's okay. In the midst of some of that unpleasant and unhelpful stuff, there will quite likely be lurking some new and amazing material. And sometimes that good stuff will only come about because of the unpleasant and unhelpful. Observation number four, censorship. And that's ultimately what this is, regardless of how our benign big data overlords might suggest otherwise, is a dangerous and undesirable thing. There are some legitimate uses of censorship and a business has every right to control the sorts of things they tolerate. But if they want to say you can't talk about bluegrass music while eating at our restaurant, then I guess they can. Of course, they don't generally want to do that because most businesses want to get more customers rather than fewer. Now, I'm not going to be so pretentious as to suggest that the banishing of my great bat post was somehow a major blow to the status of human civilization. But I will say that every little bit of forbidden language has the potential to make us just a little bit poorer. Censorship should be the action of last resort. Speaking of last, observation number five. Sometimes you lose. 
I asked Facebook to reconsider their decision on my post. They spent, as I suggested before, a scant few seconds and then announced it. They were right all along. What a shock. My only further recourse was to complain to an independent review board. Now, I went ahead and filled out the information for such a complaint, but I'm not overly hopeful that they'll even look at my request. It's not, as I said before, exactly a critical First Amendment case. My expectation is that they will decline to even review the case. Fair enough, I guess. You know, for every Rosa Parks who successfully protested against what she recognized as misguided community standards, there have been probably hundreds of people who have, at best, failed to achieve anything and, at worst, felt the wrath of the community come down hard on them. So should I turn my back on Facebook or any other entity that I feel unjustly imposes and enforces community standards? I guess I could. But what if we did that in all parts of our lives? What if my city's ban on roosters made me so angry that I felt compelled to move elsewhere? What if I refused to live anywhere that employed a police officer or a codes enforcer or a politician or whatever who wasn't perfect? Where could I live? Unless I'm gonna go all Unabomber and hole up in a cabin in the wilderness, my options are limited. And so, sometimes you lose. Sometimes life isn't fair. It doesn't make me wanna stop living it. You know, most of the things that appear on social media have about as much profundity as what these chickens are saying. And realistically, a lot of the things taken very seriously in higher education are similarly full of cock -a doodle doo Ridiculous, right? But hey, I'll stand up for their right to cluck to their heart's content. That should be the community standard for thinking people everywhere. Well, what do you think? Did I get it wrong? If so, let me know down in the co comments below. Otherwise, do all the normal stuff, but eventually, Get out of here.